All right, thank you guys for coming back to another episode of Cobra TV. And today we got a special guest. We got Ron, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. We all know how Cobra pronounces his name. Scoville? Yes. Scoville. All right, awesome. It's good to have you on the show. I think really recently, what I said that I, in an update or a future update, what I would like to see is a is a massive puzzle that the whole world would have to, not the whole world, but the whole community, everybody that was playing would have to get together to help solve it, not not that it would be a, such a simple puzzle that just one person can do by themselves. Uh, but reverting back to uh, talking about the puzzle element that I said a, a while back, uh, it, it still may be there. Um, finished or unfinished, uh, it's there. And Ron Scoville is the guy. I don't know how many people are familiar with the Galactic Hub. Uh, I'm not sure if you were the, you know, the the person who ushered that in or a person who just took it, uh, picked it up and, and ran with it. But there is a uh, uh, an app that you can put in your location from when you save your game and figure out where you are within the galaxy and players uh ron maybe himself have deemed a particular planet as the galactic hub and many players have traveled to that uh star system and uh, and that brings up another good point with the update is uh you know sean murray a long time ago said that they would uh make updates based on how people were playing the game and from what i see quite a bit of people are heading towards that uh that hub that uh, that star system do you know how many people have you know roundabout average of how many people have uh, either are on their way or have uh, gotten there yeah so i'm unrelated to that particular project to the galactic hub project right and what, ha what happens i created an uh, excel app that it's i basically call it a galactic gps okay and so when you're at the, what we now call the, the signal boosters, you're able to basically grab the 16-digit coordinate set and find where you are in the galaxy. Yeah. And I originally, um, when I when I created this Excel, I grabbed and created the Excel based on creating. Um, I had uh, I have one of the videos. Um, from Linus, one of the developed, Linus McInnes was giving a lecture on No Man's Sky and it was presented to academics, but it's on how the universe is basically made in No Man's Sky. And so, so from that, I was able to see how the galaxy was formed and it was able to create uh, this app, basically. And so when you have the cords, you can see in you know, and it's 2D, but you can see, I, the version I have, it's 3D, but you can actually see where you are um, on the top, you know, up, down, or even at height and in the, in the galaxy. And it was highly relevant because at the time uh, when I created it, a bunch of streamers were trying to find the red giant. So they were trying to do this red giant mystery. Right, yeah, I remember. And, and it's impossible to find the red giant if you follow the lore, you'll know that there's five particular, there's actually five places that are given as clues to where the red giant is. And I got kind of frustrated watching these guys do these like wild, crazy hunts to find the red giant. And how can you find this place if you don't know where you are? Right. And in order for you to actually go somewhere to get to somewhere, you have to actually be able to know where you're starting from and where you're ending up at. So you can actually see like, OK, I made it to my destination. Exactly. And if I and if I look at the galaxy map, it's, you know, it's free form, but it's still 3D. I should be able to see a certain um, astronomical constellation. And if I see that constellation, then I can, okay, I'm in this right area of space and I'm at the location. Yeah. It's kind of given in the lore. So that's how it was created. But I, I've actually seen how these guys are actually using, um, like, you know, later versions now of, that have been, like, made of web versions that are readapted uh, re from that original app now. And I think the last count that I saw, there's, like, maybe, like, 3,500 people were using it at one time. And it had gotten uh, um, a shout out from from Hello Games actually like uh, you know three four weeks ago. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of cool to actually see it. But at the time when I, it's weird because at the time when I actually made it, 
I actually tried to give it to a couple of streamers that you actually know. And I was actually trying to test it out actually on streams. And guys are like, well, what's the purpose of this? Who needs this? And it's like, uh, you're trying to, how can you say you're trying to, how can you say you're trying to do this puzzle and, 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 you know, figure out to get, you know, the, the, from point A to point B. Right. And you're and, not using this very valuable tool. Right. And it's like, it's, <laughs> it's the tool set made expressly for, you know, actually like, you know, logically solving the problem that you have. Right. Right. Uh, but, you know, a, a lot of people are heading towards that place or have already gotten to that place. And it's like, sure. you know, it's, you know, people are saying, well, why bother? You know, people are looking at it as more of a, not on a puzzle element. I don't, I don't think a whole lot of people are. And, you know, that's an issue in itself. But uh, a lot of people are just, okay, I want to go to this place that everybody's been to or a lot of people sure. are going to. And that's, it's like uh, standing on a on the ground that Abraham Lincoln used to be on. You know, you're not seeing him, but it's it's just a... It's a very famous place, you know, and I think right. that's what it, 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 it's a pilgrimage. You know, it, it's you're you're going to this place, you get there, and it feels like an accomplishment. It feels like an end game, and the end game is almost better than actually going towards the center of the galaxy and then restarting over in a new in a new galaxy. But Sean Murray, a long time ago, said when we when when we release the game, we'll see how everybody's playing. And then yeah. we'll base our updates on how people play the game. And I right. think the evidence of everyone trying to get to this uh, this galactic hub, even though we right. can't see each other um, or interact with each other, uh, but I, I think that's a major way people are playing the game. They want to, you know, as humans, we, we collect together, you know, we, we right. gather together. And I think that's something that Hello Games, I, I hope that they realize when they you know, when they talked about the galactic, you know, when he tweeted it out, gave it a shout out. I, I, I hope that they are realizing the fact that people want to be together. And I really hope oh. something like that is in the future of No Man's Sky. I really do think it is. But uh, yeah, so the way I kind of phrase it is I hope that No Man's Sky gets not I don't I don't want to see No Man's Sky get multiplayer like you know, Call of Duty style, like no. let's go uh, kill each uh, other. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I think I think that would kill the game like in two days. Right. But but, but we want to see co-op like Mass Effect had, where you know four guys could get together, see each other, and interact with each other, and go solve something together. Exactly. Yes, and that's and it's, and, it's exactly what I want. But at, at the same time, I I really hope that they don't add fast travel to that. I mean. You know, I mean, we have technology, sure. but what makes sure. uh, when I was thinking about the multiplayer and he was saying, yes, you can see other players. The, the 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 coolest aspect of No Man's Sky to me was that you were going to have to fight just to get to somebody. There was right, no right. cheating. There was no, OK, right. well, let me warp to you. You know, you'd right. have to travel well, through we'll, a, we'll a universe, travel. you know, this this major uni uh, uh, galaxy uh, and universe to, to, to get to somebody. And sure. it's like. That was so cool to me. That what that's what drew me in. So if they do add co-op, I really hope that they still make it a struggle to get to right. who and where you need to be. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. And you know, I think that that's part of the challenge that the game has right now. Uh, when I, if you if you look, you know, from launch till now, as as the game has evolved, it went through this just really bad period in the middle of the summer. And I think that when that's like, you know, 90% of the people who play just disappear. And one of the reasons why they just disappeared is it was just so heavily trolled. And what's most interesting about this whole thing, and I, I want to point this out because I, this is what I find most fascinating. The fact that, you know, you, you created the 2D app um, to, you know, know your location, know where you're going. Um, you are... You are solving so many of these puzzles, and you're identifying that there are puzzles in the game, uh, which kind of redeems me a tiny tad bit. <laughs> but at the same time, you don't even own the game. Yeah, I actually, I'm a. It's weird. I had the, the way I found No Man's Sky was I bought an Xbox One to play Mass Effect Andromeda. Right, right. And Mass Effect, at the time when I bought the system. Um, Mass Effect got pushed back. It originally was supposed to come out for the holidays. Yeah. And so when it got delayed and it got pushed back, I had this like lull of not being able to play any of, any of the type of games that interested me. And so I wind up playing um, the early access for um, Solus Project. And 
finished that, and right at the time when I finished Solus Project, um, I started to read some of the early, like, you know, it's like just a couple of early articles on, uh, actually, I didn't even see there are early articles on No Man's Sky, but I knew it was coming. And so by the time I actually found, uh, discover, actually discovered Twitch and discovered YouTube kind of at the same time, and there was this, um, the, the early player, Damien, who had gotten the early, uh, early copy of the game. Yeah, Damien. And so when, when, yeah, when Damien had gotten the copy, and I started to watch Damien stream, uh, stream and another guy, um, um, actually, he wind up using the name No, no Band Sky. And he was the main guy who was um, streaming early, too, on, on YouTube. I right. actually wind up becoming a mod, like on a guy's stream. And... And so I, I watched early and and just kind of sat through it until you know to actual release, and and so, but yeah, but I'm I'm a Mass Effect and drama and drama guy, yeah. Who got into No Man's Sky because there was just nothing for me to actually play. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and I, so, I and think I, you know even you know with the fact that you're not even owning a game, I don't think that there's a single person out there who's who's even touched No Man's Sky. That knows as much as you do about the about it, you know. I, I mean, you're just full with all this information. I mean, so you're constantly working with people that play the game. You're co constantly um, watching people's streams and studying everything. And uh, you know, like you said, you you've reached out to people like Stat, and you've reached out to Serious Gamer. You've even reached out to me, and I've reached out to you, but it wasn't you, right? Right. So, right. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. That that was crazy. Uh, I ended up. Uh, contacting uh, some guy, he had the last name Scoville, right? And I'm like, wait a minute, that's that guy, right? And his name was, <laughs> his first name was Devin, but I I know a lot of people that go by their middle names, so I'm thinking, well, Scoville, it's the same <laughs> last name, so okay. So I went ahead and I, I messaged him. I'm like, are you the the the, the dude that made the the you know the way to find right. uh, your location and get to places? And and he's he's like, yes. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. One answer, All right, that's fine. So as we started talking back and forth, and his answers were not, uh, they, they weren't satisfying. Like, they were really weird. And then so he started sending uh, messages. And if I get a chance, maybe I'll put one in a video. Uh, but he, he would just mumble on the microphone. I'm like, what, what's going on? And... <laughs> <laughs> and then that's when I seen you, uh, you, you, you posted in one of my Facebook groups, Cobra TV Facebook group. And I'm like, wait a minute, there's another Scoville. That one's Ron. So, okay. So <laughs> then I messaged you, but yeah, I, 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 I don't know if I was being trolled. I'm mean, this guy. I think he was like super foreigner. Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. If, yeah. yeah, so, yeah you're, you're being trolled. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think this guy knew what no man's sky was to be honest. Right. Right. Um, and, and it's so funny, and so and so. I actually, it's funny. I actually, I own a, a PC copy of it, but my I own a, my GPU on my laptop is an Intel GPU, oh, so I can't play. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's not can't. support. It's not supported. Yeah. And so I'm like, so there's like you know two so two ways. I'm just like I can't play it. Yeah. And and so hey. where I was very we're very lucky and very fortunate is when the game actually launched. There were so many streams, and people were streaming for so many consecutive hours. Right. That I was able to see different things, and everyone was kind of exploring and kind of learning. Yeah. At kind of, you know, kind of at the same time. Right. And and so I could find a new a new player, and a new player was like, "Hey, I don't know anything. What do you want to see?" And so I'm like, "Hey, you know, it's like you know, I'm like you know, backseat driving, and I'm like, hey, let's go and see this and this." Yeah, I remember you. Uh, I was I I had checked a. Uh, Serious X Gamer messaged me and he said, "Hey, uh, Sticks found the center." I'm like, "Who's Sticks? What, what are you talking about?" Right. So I went to his stream and you were in there in the chat, and right. uh, you were telling him all kinds of things to do and and right. uh, you know I think that was the first time he met you too, and because yeah. he was like, uh, "Ron, what do you want me to do?" And then you're you're saying right. all this and that, and uh, then I think it came out during that stream. You said, "Well, I don't have the game. You know, I, I don't play right. it." And you're like, and and then we're sitting there thinking, like, "Well, how do you know so much about the game?" So <laughs> you're actually putting together teams uh, of players and uh, going out there and trying to figure out some of these puzzle elements. Um, a lot of people don't believe there is puzzle elements, um, but yeah. what you have found was clear evidence. That there actually is, uh, there there are puzzles 
to figure out um, that they, sure. they, you know, they fit together. Um, you know, and then I had asked you, okay, well, you know, you, you found proof that there are puzzles, but what if those puzzles are not active in the game and they're just laying in dormant? And then uh, what was the response you gave me? If you don't believe that the puzzles are real, you shouldn't be trying to solve them. Right, right, right. And it's kind of like uh, it's 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 trying to prove that there's you know extraterrestrial life. If you if you come at it from the position that there is no life, then what are you looking for? Exactly. Yeah, that's a good. You're point. not gonna you're, you're not gonna look for the signatures that would actually prove it, right? Right. And so, so all of the signs, like finding like methane and oxygen and watching it deplete and actually renew, those are the kinds of signs that if you were in the scientific community, you know that those are the fingerprints that you would actually look for to actually find it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, so, I, and so when I, the, the stance that I took, and it comes from kind of being a linguist, is my initial run of actually solving puzzles was everyone who I tried to work with a couple of guys who but everyone had to have the same basically be geared out the same way it was really scientific and so everyone had to have the same basically the same multi-tool so that your, what actual configurations on your multi-tool I didn't care about but you needed to have this everyone had to have all of the V3 passes like all the, you know, the three V3, um, Atlas passes everyone had to have you know, a certain base set of, of, of tool sets. So when we went out and we tried to implement or we tried different things, um, you couldn't assign anything to randomness. And like we have a, like there's a guy on, a, on, a, on a, the current team who doesn't have any V3 passes or V2 passes. Right. So if, I, so if I sit him to an operation center and say, hey, would you go and check this, you know, go and check this out, I need to get um, a number that's on the room wall inside of a you know inside of a building. If he doesn't have that Atlas V two pass or V three pass, he can't see it. Right, right. And now would so this work in creative mode? I mean, uh, is it the same? Well, but there, but but remember, at the time when I oh I, oh yeah, yeah 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 you're talking about back then. Okay okay. Yeah. So going you know going back before Foundation and before there being a creative mode, there was no way for you to quote unquote. Um, get the puzzle pieces okay um so when when you were playing or when you were watching people play the game in the in the early days when did you realize that there could possibly be a puzzle element to this game in august and so what, what happened was um i was i was watching um i was watching in august and right when when I, I guess the first round of Portal Fever hit, and oh, and man. so and so from having watched, I noticed there was a pattern for the layout for um, for the monoliths that basically led you to a portal. And so I happened, so I caught this guy. His um, it was a, a a Twitch streamer up in uh, in in Washington, and. We did uh, a, a, a VOD for 18 hours. Oh my gosh! And and but in 18 hours, we actually showed how to find. It wind up being something like 14 portals. Really? And and we were on different. So we were we were on one planet, and on the one planet we had found five. We left that and found more, and so it was just like you know, this is how you find it. It was like it was. So you figured out the algorithm and and, and went at the way that they were generated. Yeah, it's very very early, okay. and so and so. So after we after I did that VOD, and everyone's kind of concentrated, and at the time, so this is back this is August twenty seventh, and I'll give you the date actually. And so at that time period, everybody was still concentrated who were doing portal discovery. And so word got out that this is how you find portals. So over the next three days, literally, there's like 200 videos on this is how you find portals. Figuring out how to get people together or not together, but in the same location. Um, so what other puzzles have you been working on? And so so 
So what wind up happening is, um, as we get past September, when like 90, 95% of all of the game population disappeared, yeah. uh, it just, the streams just dried up. And so there basically there's nobody streaming. And, and so I hit this wall of, of there's you know, stuff to actually finish up in the background. And so I put together um, a, 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 it's called a, you know, a little puzzle team. And there are two guys that are you know, part of that puzzle team. And we just, went, we just went started going through some of the side puzzles, like figuring out, like, you know, it's weird, you know, the, the symbols that are part of the flag that yeah. are on ruins. And so we just kind of made a checklist of here go certain pieces that are actually in the game and what do they actually mean? And we just started to actually put up the solutions for all of those things. Okay. And, and so we just numbered them all as puzzles and actually started to solve them and got the solutions. And when we actually, you know, did it, um, so it's two guys, uh, GBT and, and, uh, and Daniel that did that. And so we, we did that. And then, um, after we started, they announced foundation and when foundation came then the problem so certain people started to kind of come back right and right. And, and play and uh it's it's kind of you know has it uh has the foundation update brought better clues <sighs> not for me but it's still the, like it's like i said from from where i said it's still the same game even but, though there's but, new assets in the game now, new things yeah. to look at. Yeah, it's like because I well because like, now we, we well, well you know portals are a big thing that you guys are working on, and now right. we can see you know an evidence of of some of that in in the terminus. So and that's one of the reasons why you know there, there's things like terminus, uh, um, and there was uh, I'm not sure if you want me to to mention this because you don't want people to know uh, everything about the portals. But you showed me a room, and I'll take this right. out if you want me to, but you showed me a room that had a window, and you right. said it was a, a key to the portals um, that you weren't ready to tell people yet. And behind that window uh, it is is a color, a glow, and it's the same color as Terminus. And that's one of the right. reasons why I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, with the foundation update has brought a little bit more hints and clues and to help you figure things out. A little bit more because we didn't have the terminus before so that right, blue there, glowing light really you had nothing to base it off of but now you kind of do well there's certain things like that and then you know so tease us a little bit um how close are you to figuring out the portals and my well the, the actual in solution for the portals and how they actually um, are activated um i'm like 99.9 percent .9 positive that I have it. Wow. And and so that answers there. And so what I what I realized, and this is like uh, just before foundation, when I put together this puzzle team, is that there are all of these other mini puzzles and other things that were on in a game, and I wanted to solve those and kind of split them up in between portal and then red giant. Yes. And because some of them go into different buckets, right, right. And and I said, well, if we if we solve all of those, it's we could we could have originally what I wanted to do was have two different teams and people play the game differently. So there's certain people who like to actually travel and actually like to explore. Yeah. And so I could put together those type of people and have them go and find the red giants based on where they should be at, right? Right. And then the other people who were more planet based and who didn't really want to travel around and who who were kind of teachable, they could I could have them do some of the mapping and some of those types of things and so and certain of those guys would be on a, on the portal team. And and it's just it's hard because like I say, the audience just depleted so much that a lot of people they're just jaded. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, there's no other way to say it. It's like, and that and that includes most of the streamers. If you if you look at most of the streamers who were the guys who were, you know, really hyped on doing like lore, 
and trying to find different things that were discoverable in the game, they're all gone. Yeah. And, you know, I'm happy that you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. Yeah, it's I'm, like, I'm getting know? beat up for it, but I am. I'm still here. I'm still no, no. hanging in because, you know, yeah. it's... I, 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 you're going you're to get a big reward by being the only guy who, who is still streaming, who, who, you know, who didn't give in to that kind of negative, you know, to that kind of toxicity. I don't and know. That's stayed, hard to see. Well, yeah. No, it, it's hard. And think about from where I sit. It was really hard. I could have given up in, on the puzzles a long time ago and just said, you know, I'll just go and play another game. Yeah. And so what I and so and so it's funny. Let me just so funny. So what I did was when around November before Foundation came. And so, like, right in that in that real world when, when everybody just abandoned, I, I I said, wow, there's nobody streaming. I need something to just recharge my brain. Right. And so there's this, and so I found that there's this other PC game that is based on geometry. And it's The Witness, have you played that? The Witness, no, I never did, no. So Witness is a great game. So it's, it's a, the guy has a similar story. The, the creator of it has a similar story to Sean. He made this little small game, and from that game, he got to make his dream game. And his dream game is this game called The Witness, which is built on geometry. Okay. And, and so it has all of these little puzzles. So I go and say, I'm like, you know, if I want to see puzzles in a game that's based on geometry and based on math, why don't I go and play another game that's based on geometry? Right. Right. <laughs> and, and see, because there's only so many tricks, there's only so many ways that you can tackle a game that's based on, you know, similar uh, foundation premise. And and so as I started to play um, The Witness, I, I found that there were three puzzle types that were in The Witness that I found that were in No Man's Sky. How's that? Wow. And so there's just... And I'll give you one of them I'll give away. And it's like, it's, so it's something that no one just even pays any attention to. So when you walk inside of the space station, or if you walk inside of the V3, there's this big planet that sits in the center of the room. Okay, yeah. And everyone, you know, it, when, you, when you're playing Foundation now, that's like, you know, people don't even think about it. They just think that, oh, it's just, you know, another place to get carbon. It's a planet, right? Right. Something to farm from. And the witness that uh, setup is, it's at a pond. Okay. And when, when you do certain things at a pond, like the lily pads and plants that were in that pond changed. Hmm. And, but they changed based on how many different things you solved around the puzzle on, that the witness is built upon. It's like an island. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, wait a minute. So there's, you know, these little, how can, how can a flower represent a puzzle set? So when you go back in and you actually look at um, that planner in No Man's Sky, it's the same thing. It's actually not a planner you get carbon from. It's actually a diorama. Huh. So there's a certain plant in the center of it. Um, so this I actually tried to point this out to a particular streamer. Right. And on his last stream before he trashed the game, yeah. um, I, there's a French, this guy Scandala, he's a, a, a Frenchman who, who actually, I, I did some stuff with and, and I actually discovered this with him. And what I discovered is at, is that if you actually scan that planner, if you, if you ran a scan on it and you left that planner, it would actually give you a waypoint back on the actual planet. Really? And, and so I'm like, oh, wow, so this is actually cool. So then it became a direct correlation between the two games that it actually, the planner was actually a diorama. And if you figured out what these different plants and other items represented, you could actually find them on the planet. And then also... The way they were configured and the way they were laid out on certain planets, they, they, it's like a, if you ever go to, if you, you know, go to museums and you actually see dioramas, they're miniatures. And so they would do the same thing. So in this, in the, in the planner, 
you would see like a circular or an arched rock set. It's like a rock sitting in the planet, right? Mm -hmm. When you go to the planet, that same set would be like a big, it would be the same pattern except for it's gigantic and it's planet size now. Okay. And so it was, they were giving you like representative scale of, of different um, geological, like, you know, topography features. So you could find different things um, within the actual game itself, and just people didn't pay any attention to it. It's crazy. Yeah. So there's there's you know there's a lot of great little things that you know are are within No Man's Sky, and and you know I just it's I, I wish they would have actually made the port. I I say this not joking, but I, if they would have made an Xbox One port, we would have been done. I think I would have been able to. Um, finish it up over the holidays. Wow. <laughs> and, you know, kind of, kind of, I'm stuck uh, and kind of at the mercy of actually having this other community of people who actually can physically play the game. And, and you know, and that audience actually, you know, kind of still being there. Yeah. And, yeah, so, yeah, so there's there's this game that was made, but it's funny, there's, but I actually keep the article in our puzzle group. But there's this game that was built on es on esoteric puzzles, and it was a trilogy made on the Atari 2600 in 1978. Wow! And the puzzles still haven't been solved. Are you serious? Yeah, it's a great it's a great article. And so they and they actually they published it. They had a you know there was a prize a cash a cash prize that actually survived like you know ten game companies would buy Atari. They had to keep the puzzle open in case somebody actually solved it years later. And they did an article on it like uh, last year, and it's one of the articles that I would actually point people to who say that there was nothing in No Man's Sky. And I'm like, yeah, you know, there's puzzles that are actually built in some of these games that have gone years just unsolved. Wow. And and uh, the big puzzle um, that um, Sean used for uh, kind of the basis for for doing what he did was the um, curious cube puzzle that uh, Peter Molyneux built for for his uh, Android game. And that one was done, you know, that was supposed to be uh, you know, it was people thought they were just playing a generic game and Curious Cube had this puzzle similar that was built underneath the actual game and the guy solved it like, you know, it took him like seven months, eight months to actually solve it, but he actually solved it. Yeah, and see, a lot of people are saying that there is no puzzle because they didn't say that there was going to be a puzzle. But if you look at the way that they treat, uh, you know, the release and updates of, of No Man's Sky, Hello Games gave this intricate building with all this infrastructure, uh, right. and they didn't tell you how to use it. There's no information out there. It's just trial and error. What does this piece do? What does that piece do? Uh, how do I, you know, use the garage door? What do I need first, you know? And they didn't tell you how to use it. So I, I could actually sit there and say if they did put puzzles in the game, you know, based on how they treated the foundation update, they're not going to tell you. Right. And, and, it's, and, and when people actually came back and said, well, why doesn't um, Hello Games say and give us a hint on what the actual puzzle is? I'm like, well, why would they? And it's like, it's actually in the game. Why? Well, um, so, I, I, you I, actually... If you read, if you actually read the cards for you know for 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 different lore pieces or lore, you know lore parts of the game, yeah, there's stuff in there that actually tells you what to look for. Right, right. I, I talk to I you uh, I talk to Hello Games every now and then, not, not over Skype or anything, but through uh, private messages. Right. And one of the developers, uh, I'm not going to give his name out, but I asked him since we're on a very open communication. Right. I said. Um, you ever seen a movie number 23? Uh, I asked him and uh, he was like, yeah, I'm like, okay That's how I feel with these portals. You know, I, I'm claiming that right. there's a puzzle behind him and everyone's calling me crazy and nuts I mean go back right. and look at the I think uh, you know what I might have made the video private because I was tired of being harassed um, Right, but if you go back and look at the comments, uh, oh my god, it's just people were just going crazy on me But his response I said uh, why I said could you at least tell me? That they're active in the game and that th we can figure them out. That way, I could uh, right. you not know, think I'm I'm, I'm crazy yeah, like everybody people. else is saying, uh, you know, claiming right. that I am. And his response was, "Ooh, sorry, buddy, 
we're going to have to go dark right now. Right. And, and that's it. And I'm just like, you know, um, we've messaged every now and then uh, from that time, but not as much. So, you know, that leaves me with, uh, are you going to go dark because you didn't activate him? Are you going to go dark because you wanted to be a puzzle? What does that even mean? Well, you know what it tells me is, like I said, it's the discovery. If, if your boss put this in the game, yeah, and and it wasn't, it wasn't meant to be a one month puzzle. Right, right. And that's that's what people, if you if you go back and it's funny if you go back in, the original genesis for and this is what you're talking about, what you wanted to actually see in the game at the next update is the way the original puzzle set was supposed to be solved, was supposed to be solved by community. That was supposed to be this game's version of actually of co-op. Is yeah. that the community as a whole could work together because everybody has different experiences and different backgrounds and right? Right, right. And and you put all those people together and people from all over the world because think about it, there's like at least six, eight different language versions to this game. But this is what I also I noticed too, is so my, this my part of my background is I co-founded one of the first anime manga companies in the, in, the, in the country. Really, and 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 all of the players who were playing this game, who were playing and who were playing the Japanese version of this game, I would go on Japanese game streams and and I would and I talked to some of the Japanese gamers, and none of the Japanese gamers had talked to anybody who was playing the English version of this game. Okay. There was just there was zero dialogue and 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 communication. Right. When when I hit certain puzzle sets, there was there's a couple of puzzle sets that are um, they're number based and they're kind of esoteric. Yeah. And so I was talk I was talking to um, two streamers from Israel about that particular subset and some of the language that was actually in the game, and they were just like, oh, like you know, like they were freaked out, like, <laughs> like you know, like, like you know, it's like, well, how do you know how are you know, how did you, you know, you find us and you found us. And it's like, and I'm, and it just kind of let me see that all of these things that are actually clear and, and actually I got trolled too. I actually, I got trolled on Sirius's, on one of Sirius's stream. And actually that's when I, I kind of uh, uh, went really not public with, with a lot of the portal stuff from that point is there's, if you, uh, if you, you know, you should, figure this out too you can probably see it in your head but if you if you go outside of the space station there's two symbols on either side of the entry to the space station right and one is one looks like a number um it's a nine okay and on the left hand side is this foreign looking shape that you would not even would not even know the language of, right right that shape is actually the Hebrew symbol for Beth. Okay. Which is which is used in in a in a in calculus for um, it's 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 actually used in calculus for uh, in physics for for three D space. Oh wow. And so it's actually a mathematical symbol, and I'm explaining to somebody in you know in the during this on uh, during Sirius' stream that these numbers are here, and if you look at these numbers, they're in different. So there's languages that if you understand that symbols and numbers are math based, and we were in, and it got into this debate of. I can't believe that Sean Murray would make this game that if you think about it, the entire game is based on a math formula. Right, yeah. And so why would Sean Murray make this game that's based on a math formula about the creation of the universe and life and existence itself? And why would he do that and have us have to have knowledge of Hebrew or Greek, and I'm like, uh, and so when they said it, it kind of let me kind of see like how close-minded people were in the community, because nobody thought that when I build my multi-tool and I'm looking at tau sigma, 
<laughs> yeah, <them>. right. <laughs> yeah, you got a good point. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm like, you know, Tau Sigma, you know, Theta are all Greek numbers. Yeah. And the alpha symbol is, you know, sitting outside of, a, on a, you know, on a building somewhere. And you didn't question not one time the language of it. Hmm. Yeah, but if, but if point. I but if I right, but if I point out this other math symbol, which is highly connected to huh, to uh, you know to to relativity and to the foundation of the game and dimension and you know three D and geometry, hmm. you would you would fight it. Wow. And and I when I and when I hit that, I just said, you know what. I'm just dealing with the wrong group of people. And, and, and it's hard when you are, when you find yourself in that moment to seek out people in a community that are still open-minded to discover. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, like, luckily I, I found, you know, two guys to do that. And, 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 you know, I had, so, so the funny story. So uh, during Christmas, I'm watching my my six year old nieces here, and and I wanted to show her you know movie. So I actually I was I watched Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Right, good movie. And so I'm watching Third um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and in the front of me, I'm in the transmission room in No Man's Sky. Okay. So when you solve the puzzle, and you know the room, you know the puzzle comes up on the screen. Right. And it's the three circles, right? So yeah. there's if you there's three circles that come up on the screen. And I had originally pointed this out during another stream, and I just said that has to be a point that we're supposed to, you know, find. And it's either showing you three locations or it's showing you three points to kind of um, triumvirate. Right. And, no, what are you talking about? There's nothing there. It's just you know, it's just all randomness. Well, lo and, lo and behold, that puzzle is in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Wow. And the map is called a Mercator map. Okay. And, and, close, and I'll give you the scene in Close Encounters. It's actually, you can find the clip actually even on, on YouTube for people who want to find it. And so watching uh, uh, Close Encounters... There's this there's a scene where where Dreyfus, or not it's not Dreyfus actually it's it's the guy who is at the uh, what's supposed to be the JPL in the movie, and so right before he remember he goes and he gets the big globe and he rolls it into the map right, and they this is when they figure out that the alien signals is coming from uh, Montana, right. Okay. okay. When he when he does that at that scene, he has the he has this code of it's like a nine digit code that kept repeating that the aliens had sent. And so when he gets the code, the guy go he references the code and he goes, you know what? I used to work at such and such, and I reference you know I recognize that this is a this is the GPS code, longitude and latitude code. And when he when he does that, they go and get the map and they put the three points together. And when it, once they put the three points on the map, they go to the center, and that's how they get the destination that everything is taking place at the big mountain in Montana, right? Right, right. So just to show you how crazy No Man's Sky is. So before the game got trolled to oblivion. And remember when they had the no? There used to be like the the original Reddit group on No Man's Sky, right? And in the original discussion before it got nuked and all of the stuff got taken out because it was just it became nothing but trolls. Somebody had actually put um, the calculations from one of the V three rooms in that form. Really, and there's a calculation there. If you count the, if you because if you count certain monitors, there is a, a pulse on certain terminals. Okay. And and if you do the count, 
it gave this number set. And actually, I took the number set and I had the number set in the file going all the way back to August. Huh. And so I took the number set and now I have a direct correlation to the number set watching Close Encounters. That is insane. And so I'm like, when I see it, I go, you know, I'm like, you know, holy, you know, that's, this is like, this is, this is the actual puzzle, right? Yeah. And so we, I, I had just added uh, these two guys, Handy and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, Kyle from, from Reddit into, they were doing mapping and helping like map certain stuff from, from the game um, um, as part of this team. And when we were done mapping it, we discovered that the three locations on that map actually are three portals. So, so the same portals that you would see in the game correspond to this map and you could find them the same way so they were they were put there as part of this bigger puzzle right right, right. and so if you once you got to see what the what the what the puzzle was and what the pieces were and what the solution was it was pretty cool to actually like you know to actually see like oh wow you know this came from this you know the other element from a you know pretty iconic you know science fiction film Right, right, and and that and that's the thing that I another thing that people who play No Man's Sky ignore, like Oblivion and Tet, and they're not Easter eggs, but when you look at how Sean um, formed this game, and the different elements of what different things are within No Man's Sky, certain things you don't have to recreate because they've already been told in other science fiction works. That is truly been, amazing. Are they been told in other histories from other civilizations? Yeah. Are you? And, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So I. So when you, you know. So when I look at puzzles and and there actually is a pattern to how puzzles are laid out in No Man's Sky. And and how the universe is actually formed. And if they don't fit that form, you know that the puzzle isn't like legit. Like it's not a legit answer. It has to fit all three things. Yeah, yeah. And and so when I when I when I saw that, I was just you know it just kind of really hit me that you know what, you know Sean is he's pretty smart because all of these things they're all um, they're all different in how they the stories are told. But the core base of a lot of these stories, it's similar. It's they're based on the same foundations. Right. Uh, uh, you know, everything about this game is kind of secretive. Uh, more secretive than I've ever seen in my life of, you know, being around games. Uh, to the simplest things, like, uh, and it might be non-disclosure agreements or, or and I don't even think it's that. Because William Porter is the person who wrote all the lore. It wasn't uh, Dave Gibbons. Uh, he just contributed the comic book and built his uh, story off of the lore that William Porter already wrote. So all the interactions that you get from the alien NPCs, William Porter wrote those. William Porter right. wrote the uh, you know the the monolith uh, uh, you know lore and all that stuff. So right. I contacted him and asked him if he would uh, like to come on and talk a little bit about the lore uh, that was already in the game that was already public right. and. Right. He kind of said, ooh, ah, yeah, I, I can't do that. Plus, he said there's another writer, so, um, you know, it's an ongoing story. And, right. and I'm sitting there thinking, wait a minute. You know, I mean, why wouldn't you have a, a, a conversation about work that you did? I mean, I, I can't see there being a non-disclosure agreement because it's there published is. work that you, huh? There is, and there, there would be. Because if you... This is what this is what I was just alluding to a little bit earlier. Okay. If you actually if you read if you read the lore, and there's certain key words if you actually pull them out of the lore, uh -huh. you'll understand what the puzzle is. So it's like it's actually the job that he was paid for was to hide it. Was it's you make. Know, do you understand what like esoteric you know what how what esoteric stuff is based on it's like 
uh, quasi, let's call it, let's just call it the Da Vinci Code. Okay. And that kind of esoteric things where things are built on geometry, sacred geometry. And the easiest way to hide things is to put them in wide open. I see, I see, I see. Are so you- if I... So if I, if I want to hide something and I put it in wide open, your mind tells you that if there was something there, why wouldn't they, why would they put it in wide open so we could just clearly see it? Yeah. And, and your, your mind's inability to think that someone would hide something in the open <laughs> <laughs> is why he can't give you that hint. Because if he gives you that hint and all he... It's like it's already given. Uh, are you guys posting any of your findings and discoveries anywhere? We are. It's it's a private group, and for this reason, there's a great Sean interview where he alludes to um, there being an insider club for No Man's Sky based off of the old Elite Dangerous um, Elite Club. Are you familiar with that? Uh, Familiar with that particular interview? When they did the the original Elite, there's puzzle stuff that's hidden within the game. Elite Dangerous. Oh, the original Elite. The the first? Okay, okay, okay. And when when those things were solved, you would get a prompt within the game that says enter your contact information and you would be admitted inside in, in this club um, at the publisher where you would basically get like advanced previews and new game updates and some other things that weren't made available to public okay and there's great I have this great interview with Sean actually talks about that and the interview actually asked Sean personally did you put something like that in No Man's Sky? Uh-huh. And he and he half answers it, but he doesn't. And so, realistically, it kind of made me think that there's something like that built within Hello Games for this game. And so that being the case, and that being the, the reward, I wanted to, when I formed the team, I wanted to make sure that the team of guys who you know, who put the work in, get the, the, you know, get the notoriety for actually, you know, working their butts off to solve this puzzle. Wow. So do it. that's the reason why you guys are keeping most of the things you're discovering hush, hush. Then, yeah, right? absolutely. And, and if you, and if you go back and it's interesting because if you go back and in your interview that you did with the ARC team, it's not too dissimilar to the ARC team who, after, you know, a year would have published a white paper. Hmm. And you know, the reason why they were going to publish the white paper is they're like, you know, let's get us enough time, <laughs> right? To actually make some discoveries and have something to actually publish. And then we will kind of cherry pick what information we make public. Right. I don't think that this puzzle was actually meant for. 1.2 million gamers who purchased No Man's Sky to solve. Wow. It's like it's, I don't think it was built to be that kind of puzzle for the entire gaming community to solve. It was meant for guys who who took time to understand like the really deep, true meaning of the game and come to whatever that solution is and the truth is, I don't even think Sean would expect that it would have have happened this fast. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, at, at first glance, it, you can see that there's puzzles in the game because certain things immediately just don't make sense. And you either A, got to think, okay, these are puzzles. Or right. B, you think, well, this game's not finished. You know, right. and it's like, okay, you, you think, uh, you weigh them out. They worked on this game for years. They released right. it, and on the day that he was uh, the, the day before it was released, he was streaming it uh, right. on Twitch, and I think it was over Twitch. He was streaming, right. and they were happy. They were drinking beer, and they were showing the game. They were they were doing their own little uh, Hello Games Let's Play, and right. so if they were not done with what they intended on it being, 
they they would have been a little bit embarrassed to show that they wouldn't have been happy playing it Right. So that's what leads me to believe, and and this is why I made the video a long time ago, is that there's there's puzzles to this game, because no, they were happy when it was released, and you know, I agree. yeah, I, I never I never took the position that there was nothing there. I just said scientifically, if you look at it, kind of, um, if you look at it with the with the system kind of yeah. in place, yeah, and a, and you put a process in place. All you need is one opening, and once you get that one opening, that one discovery, yeah, you could keep going if you right. if you're dedicated and you can keep following. It. Yeah, and, and and that's what I do. And and so the other the other part of me is it's just where I have this crazy background. And but the the original company that I founded, we also for years we were the. Um, Tokyo Bureau, Tokyo office for like official PlayStation magazine and for EGM. And EGM was, you know, the biggest mag game magazine in the world. And and you know, years later, I got into like winemaking, and that's all it is. Is the difference between being a great winemaker and being an amateur winemaker is being able to follow a process. And people who, you know, you have these guys who make like one wine, like the one wine is like spectacular. And then if you go back to them and say next year, what well, can you reproduce the same wine? They can't because they don't know what they did. Right. And what I learned, and you know, to be a winemaker is to be a great winemaker. You have to be able to make that same thing. Like it has to be repeatable. And, yeah. And and it's like and it's like you don't you don't even question how you did it. You just do it. It's like Neo in the Matrix, right? You just <laughs> yeah. doing it. And and I actually became that kind of winemaker. Wow. And 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 you know, over like, you know, three years I had actually like won the most uh, wine medals internationally for like a single individual. And I was beating billion dollar wineries in wine competitions. Really? And 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 it was just that's what it came from was I had this really good discipline and focus on certain things that Kind of that are of interest to me that I'm passionate about, and and that ability to pay attention to really small details that other people overlook. Yeah. yeah. And and so when I, you know, when I'm doing certain things on on No Man's Sky, you know, I like to, you know, kind of have a stream going of some. I like new guys because new guys aren't jaded, so they're just playing the game. Anything that they see, they're excited about, right? Right. And it's like you know the guy who's you know, two logging 200 hours, 300 hours, who thinks he knows the entire game, but he's never seen anything in the game. He doesn't stop for two seconds to look at, oh, let me look at this room and let me look around the entire room. Yeah. And let me look at it slow. Let me look at this sign on the door. And, you know, there's a painting in the space station like, oh, wow, if I look at it, it's actually not a painting. It's a hologram. Right. And it's like, you know, there's things like that, that, you know, that you can't train people to, to do. And, and it, you know, it really changes how you kind of experience the game. And, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm really happy with what the game has become. And I just wish that more people spent time with the lore and this really rich backstory and oh, what it amazing. actually like, so all amazing. means and it's like it's like awesome I one of the things like the that we didn't cover in the lore story was uh you know the the abandoned building lore sure. um and some other things just because you know we just kind of wanted to, to you know cover the npc's origins sure. and, and things like that but i think the most interesting parts of the lore are the the weird past uh from the uh, abandoned buildings Right, and there was this great part, this is great part in the lore that I don't I don't know if you caught, and so when you when you play the when you're playing the game, this is pre foundation, okay? Anything post foundation, like I kind of don't care. It's like there's certain stuff because the puzzle you can't change the puzzle, so right. all of the so, so all of the puzzle pieces and all the puzzle solutions had to be in the game pre foundation. Yeah. So all of the new materials that came about from, um, you know, post foundation, they, 
have no influence on the on the puzzles. You don't think? You they, don't, you they don't are, think they Terminus are, they are, adds they, to it at all? No, well, they're already in the game. Terminus. That Terminus and the stuff we're talking about, that stuff is quasi already in the game. So, like, I'll give you a quick example of what I mean. Um, if you if you are if you if you're looking at um, the original game, there's only one element or one not it's not even an element it's a curiosity, and there's only one curiosity that you can't find naturally anywhere in the game. You can only find it at the space station. You have to buy it from a galactic terminal. And what's that? that? Re the the night crystals. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Right. Yeah. Everything else you can find. <coughs> I'm gonna have to check. You'll I, find I, you'll you'll find the Viking effigies, the bike, the daggers, the gek nip, all that kind of stuff. You'll find all of that stuff in the game. I'm gonna have to go back and look at my survival uh, uh, game save because I remember something about a night crystal when I was looking for a gek relic. Right. I and, and I don't know if I found one or not. Uh, because I well, remember, I remember thinking, <laughs> "What is this? This is not what I'm looking for." Um, right, right. So I'm gonna have to go back and see if I have it in my inventory. Yeah, and it's like, but and so now what you'll discover is the only place that you'll find it is this is pre-foundation. Okay. All right. So pre-foundation, the only place that you would ever get that night crystal was if you bought it. Okay. And most most people didn't buy it because they were not used, so they were worthless. Right. So when you, and, and when you did the lore vid, there's this great part in the Gek lore where the Gek actually are talking about the Corvettes. Okay. And they, and so I'm going to paraphrase it, but the Gek basically say the Corvettes were foolish because they had the crystal beneath them and they didn't realize what a valuable resource they had. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you if you if you read the lore preceding that and you see what the crystal was, you would get that the crystal was night crystal. Okay. So if the crystal is only found on the Corva in the Corvax world, you can't means you can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so if I if I go to a Gek planet or if I'm at a Viking planet, I'm not gonna find it. And so when it, when I looked at that, that was one of the reasons why on a puzzle team why I want to have like two guys. I need to find two other guys who can contact me. So I want to put on this team who who want to actually go and make those kinds of discoveries because I, I have a good I have a good idea of how to you know where it's at right how to actually find it at its place. Right. I just need somebody to actually be like not lazy and actually go to the planet and find it. Yeah. And because because the lore is pretty clear at where it should be, and and so there's there's those kinds of things that are written into the lore, and 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 so also in the lore when it speaks of the great void, and there's nine, and the way No Man's Sky is made, uh, you know there's nine areas of space, and then there's like you know, seven randoms. Okay, yeah. So they repeat. All of the areas of space repeat. Mass, expanse, fringe, right? Mm -hmm. And and prime. It's like all of those names repeat. And when you look at the lore and, and how the lore sets up or frames how the universe is built. So if you look at the universe, it was originally just those nine original spaces and then these other randoms kind of got added on when it when the story talks about you know when you go to the fringe of space the gek is here right everyone pierce the gek at the fringe it's not an irony that there's actually an area called the fringe and if you go to the fringe that you know that area is always where gek spaces and the green, uh, the the planets are kind of uh, the way the setup is. Let me show you. I have it actually in a file. Let me open it up so I can give it to you. So people can say, "Oh, he gave you the wrong information." 
if you so if you if you so there's nine regions of space mass expanse band boundary cluster void adjunct terminus and fringe and the other reasons are, are random so like in in a in the regular areas of space the yellow stars are always f e e is the green star systems red is m and o is blue but in the fringe uh, system g is yellow e is green k is red and b is blue Gek. Huh. it's like it, it in the french it differentiates and it spells gek that's crazy and so there's all of these little wow. <laughs> subtle things <laughs> yeah man that's... that are that are there right yeah that are you know there's things that are there in the game that i know that are they're like lore driven and and they're puzzle pieces for you to find different things like a good example is if I off when I when I'm trying to have people who who work with me, and I'll ask them. I just say, look, if if, if, if we were if we were on a team together, right. and we wanted to go and find a red giant, where would we look? If you were on a galactic map, and I'm even you, I'm asking you now. If you wanted to find a red giant, where would you look? Uh, where would I look? I'd probably go through the galactic map looking for red star systems. Exactly, yeah, but but like how would you find up. a how would you find a red star system? Well, it tells you. No, no, but that's but but that's in if you if you're on a on a on if you're in a on a on a, on a galaxy map, right? Yeah. Out of the trillions and trillions of stars, how would you deduct down to find red star systems? Oh, I'd have to just you know fly through. You find them random. See, that's yeah, the yeah, random. Yeah. I think the way Sean coded the game is. The 16 areas of space is based on a bit code, right? Right. And it cycles through the RGB colors. And if I want to find a red star system, I go to a red area of space. The areas of space are colored. Right. Yeah. So if I'm looking for red, I go to a red area of space and it has more majority red star systems in that area. If I'm looking, if I'm looking for a blue star system, I go to the blue area of space. If I'm looking for green, I go to a green area of space. And similar, if I'm looking for red and blue systems together, I go to purple. Huh. And, and that's how the game is actually laid out, and it's pretty clever. And so there's like there's color cues that are that are there to help you um, find certain things that are. You know, support, like puzzle elements within the game. Yeah. And, but you have to be, your mind has to be thinking that way and seeing the game for like how it's built. Right, and right. There's, there's this great card that Nada has that I always send to everybody. And basically, Nada is basically saying when you see the, when you see the universe, you see randomness where, and it's like if, the, if, if this thing is created and it's a simulation, there should be no randomness. Yeah. So the the fact that the fact that there's randomness it tells you that there's something else at work that you should be looking for. Exactly. Exactly. And so you should so you should be seeing so when you see a pattern, you should take note that okay, there's a pattern here. It's like it's not random. It's just not placed there. It's not arbitrary. And and I think that like I said, I think those cards and the way the game was written with the lore and those pieces, they tried to teach you and they tried to tell us that we should be open minded. And when you see things, you should whenever whenever I even watch a stream, always keep a notepad handy. Yeah. And and it's like, you know, you take notes. You know, you see something, you take notes. You see how something interacts or an object, you take notes so you can at least have a reference point to go back to it. Yeah. You know, months later, it's like if you don't if you don't take notes and you don't do that, it's like how do you how do you go back in and, and remember yeah, you something that you, you saw you on a trillion it. planets, yeah. right? Yeah, you know what's interesting is one of the interviews right before launch, Sean Murray was talking about um, resources uh, being on certain planets, and sure. and he says something to the effect, 
and I'm paraphrasing, he says it's things like this that I I would like to see communities get together and try and figure things out. And Correct. now, if you look at the game that we got, there is nothing to figure out with Correct. what resources are where, you know, because it, that that's pretty simple. And what recipes build what? What blueprints build what? There's no need for a community to come together to figure any now, of that now, out. Now. None okay, of that. Now. Okay, now let me give you the answer. What if there was a formula that you needed to power the portals? Right, yes, but, but what I'm alluding to is and, and, and it's you, the and puzzle. Need, that's right, right. what he, I think, I feel like that's what he was referring to is that's there's exactly a bigger mystery to the game. To. Yeah. That's exactly what he was saying. Yeah. So when, when you, when you sort of, when you look at that interview, take that interview and that saying, and you take the other things that Sean did drop as clues, right? Right. And when you put them all together and you frame it, you can frame that there's this layer underneath the game that we're not seeing. Yeah, I believe it. And, I believe and it. it's like, and, and it's like, you know, I think I don't think the guy lied. I think the guy made a game that was um, really ambitious. And based on how the game was um, scripted, um, when I when I play games like The Witness and like every interactivity has a payoff. Yeah. And that's because it's it's an ice. The game is not it's not written with that kind of scale. And so everything is confined to an island, and that each island has so many puzzles. So if I interact with a vase and I move it, it stays moved. Mm -hmm. And I know I moved it. And no man's sky, there's no way to do that. Right. So if I interact with an object here over time, based on how the real universe, now we're talking about quasi real physics, right? Right. If I if I mined or exploited a resource, it should be gone. Right. And if I if I come back after X amount of time, I should be able to go back to the same planet, and that resource should technically have regenerated. So if that if that being the case, there's no space for me. There's no place to say you touch this item and it stays touched. Right. And so the way I looked at it, and and in my mind, I framed where some of these puzzles have to kind of lie. And when you understand like relativity and how you travel through time and go back or go forward, right, in time, right. I think that edge of space at that coordinate is where a lot of the things that are lower pieces are, and I think that they're fixed items within the universe. Hmm. And so there's just because of the way you would program code, there has to be in the way the puzzle works for, for the portals, is that there's so many pieces that are fixed. And like if I put night crystals in, I only want them to be on a certain planet, I have to put them in a certain area of space. I can't just put it randomly. Yeah. On a map, it has to be within that eight bits of code. Right. Exactly. Where it where it regenerates and it stays there for four regenerations of the galaxy. And after four regenerations of the galaxy, you can't find it anymore. Yeah. And and so, you know, it's like I said, when you look at that and you look at um there's this great myth of Atlas tricking Hercules to carry put the world on his and universe on his shoulders. Yeah. So, because the Atlas was tired of carrying it all. Yeah. And so, when you look at those first five universes, um, two of them being named after, uh, you know, Euclid and Hilbert, the discovery of 2D space, 3D space. And then you look at the next three being named after the children of Atlas. And then, after that, after you get past that five, they all go random. Right. And it fits with 8 bit code and you being able to fix items within that code and then after that they become random yeah and that's the way the game should be is we kind of give you four chances at bat to discover this stuff 
And if you don't discover it, well, clearly you weren't looking for it, so just go and play the randomness of the game. Hmm. At that point, that's kind of how I see it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's very good. It, we're going to be wrapping up here pretty soon. What I, w- one of the things I want to know is, is there any way for people to follow what you guys are doing, uh, even on a, uh, a minimal level? Yeah, well, well, so what we did is I put together a, uh, this puzzle team, and I'm pretty around, so it's like I'm findable. It's like I don't hide. And usually you can, guys can catch me on, on certain streams on, on, a, on, a, on YouTube especially. Right. And if they catch me there, they can just ping me or, or you know, send me an email or whatever. And, and, you know, I have room now on the team. I want to get two guys in and two guys who really like to explore, who, who, who are interested in solving this. And, and, you know, and do that and then just finish it up. Well, I think what and, would be really interesting is if you had, uh, you know, just a, like an audio diary of, you know, things that, oh, you yeah. know, like, you know, what we're doing here. But if you did it uh, on YouTube, um, you know, you don't have well, to tell everybody everything. Yeah. Well, what's kind of what's kind of interesting is, is that this is kind of the fun of, of randomness is it's funny. So um, someone who is on your Facebook actually asked he asked me like this like two three weeks ago he's like portals don't exist in foundation right right and and i'm sitting there and i'm like (laughs) well yeah portals do exist in foundation and because we just mapped right right and and so i happened to catch him on the stream before he streamed and and i said well where are you at and and he just took too long to answer me back so we randomly hopped on youtube and we were checking something out but while we were checking it out we were openly showing you where the things were right so if you were watching the stream casually you could have saw like oh this is why i could do this and this and i could see a portal we were like we didn't care right we weren't you know trying to show the portals and but you would have saw that they actually are not only there but you would have saw like how many of them there were on the planet and and so you know so casually when we're doing different things in the game, we've already discussed it off channel. We're just kind of going through the motions and looking at different stuff. I see. So it's a different way. It's a way for people to actually see stuff. And for me, the one the one reason why I didn't want to, and you know, kind of rush and make things public and kind of keep them semi private is I never wanted to take away anyone's. Um, I don't, I don't want people to lose that sense of discovery because that's really what the game is about. I see. And if you tell people, you know, someone asks all the time, well, tell me the answer, tell me the answer to this. If I tell you the answer and I'd rather teach you how to see a puzzle and then t- and then if you see the puzzle, teach you how to solve it. Yeah. Because it, then you can, you, can, you can go on, then you can look at other things and you can see, wow, there's all this other stuff that I missed. Yeah, no, I, can, I, I 100% uh, get it. Uh, it's like knowing the ending to an M. Night Shyamalan movie before watching right. it. You know, it's like, it's not going to mean anything. It's not going to have that right. impact. Yeah, I get it. I get it. It's cool. You know, I like it. It's like, yeah, so I think, you know, I think that's, you know, since you have this game, it's built upon discovery and it's this vast universe. Yeah, yeah. That, that if you, if you really are into it and it's like getting to the lore and it's like so read the lore actually read the monoliths and read the plaques and yeah. they did a really good job at telling you different pieces but it's up to you if you're really passionate and really interested to actually find it read it and learn from it right and and if you do those things and then there's a great move that's where i think the reward is so when you actually start to find these puzzles and you're you know doing these solutions you're like oh wow i just found this it's a great motivator yeah because I, even even me doing puzzles and i'm not physically able to play the game my motivations now are totally different than the guy who's actually streaming it and actually playing it. yeah exactly and it's and it's like you know i need there's certain stuff that i need if i don't you know if i'm not finding certain stuff then indiscoverable and finding like confirmation or finding like okay this is true not true then 
you know, it's like when I when I find it's okay, we were right and we found this and this is the answer. Yeah. For me, it's like it's like it's great. And so that's what keeps me kind of even going, not being able to physically play. Right, right, right. And so yeah, you know, so I, I just hope that uh, um, you know people who are you know people who are who are out there um, take the time to really just dig deep into this game. It's a great game. Yes, it is. Yes, it and, is. And and there's all of these little things that Sean has you know put in the game that are cultural and they're, some of them are cultural some of them are religious and some of them are math and some of them are science and some of them are language and you know if we if we take the time to actually look at them all we can kind of get a, a big understanding of, of why he created this game the way he did yeah exactly yeah but yeah so yeah so there's and and you know like I said, you, when you put together the lore vids and you know, I'm just sure that a lot of people who who watch that video, that's probably the first time that a lot of people actually heard the Lord put together. It was place. like I was so amazed that some of the people, you know, like you know, they played the game for a long time and they're like, "Wow," you know. And I'm like, in you know, it, and it's because uh, okay, say that there's no puzzle in No Man's Sky at all. Uh, the lore itself is a puzzle. You got to go around and piece it together. It, it might uh, it, in the beginning. It seems like it's coming all jumbled and random. Right. You know, like it's all oh, you're getting this before that, and you got to figure this right. out. Um, but that in itself is a little bit of a puzzle. You got to go hunt it down, piece it together, and figure out what the heck happened. Because you might learn all uh, some of the Viking. And it might right. not make too much sense, and then you learn some of the Corvax, and it starts to make a little bit more sense. It's a puzzle too. Right. Yeah. So the, you know, there's, and it's like you know, there's this you know great discovery of of language and and how people actually like learn, and <laughs> and and I'm just really shocked at what a what a great challenge that this team had. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 when you look at the size of the team. I don't think it's appreciated how much work went into the development of this game. And, you know, it's easy to, you know, get to the point that the game is at now. If you were, you know, if you were, like I said, if you were EA and you had a thousand person, you know, development team at your disposal, they could have cranked out, you know, where No Man's Sky is. They could have put that out after a year. Right. Yeah. You know, when you're a small team, just to get the stuff that they're out now, it's like, you know, now we're at you know, we're at the, finally at the point where Hello Games can just really tweak the seed, and that's all you have to do to change what animals are present. Yeah. That's and, right. you know, the change sizing, the change, you know, build a view and that kind of stuff that people complain about. Yeah. You know, so it's just, yeah, it's just really, it's really, it's a really interesting, you know, kind of experience. And, and for a lot of us, you know, we wish to have like true space exploration yeah and so to actually so to have no man's sky even at this scale there's a lot more to discover in no man's sky than any star trek game i could have bought oh you're 100 right there yeah 20 years 30 years right yeah, yeah. you know as a kid my you know when we played those games and you know, i'm 46 now i remember you know star trek games coming out when we went from paper rpg <laughs> yeah. to the first to the first computer games yeah and we played you know we played star trek we, we had a star trek game and you could even get uh, a starship fight we were happy right and we were only shooting you know a phaser and a photon torpedo right yeah and so you know the act so yeah. to see no man's sky be at its level and for you to be able to discover like you know millions of different planets and you know and have them be randomly you know, generated to if you understand like why things are regenerated and how they're you know generated in the game then you should see a certain amount certain things should be similar and not totally random right and and so you know those things for me they're fun yeah because it's like it's it's all part of a bigger mystery it actually is yes do you have uh, any closing statements that you would like to say to anybody out there that made it this far into the podcast? Yeah, if you yeah, if you if you guys are playing the game, 
keep playing. Um, don't get discouraged. There's a lot of things that are out there. Ignore half of the stuff that you've read already online because most of it's already been disproven. Right. And, and so you need to actually look at the game openly and actually just be open to learning. And, and, and I like to think, uh, uh, you know, the guys, the, you know, four guys who had, a, you know, two guys, uh, Kyle and, and Handy, come on and help Matt at the, at the end here. And and the two other guys that I was able to actually even get the to join a puzzle team, oddly enough, it just there was there wasn't that kind of interest. Yeah. And and so you know, like I said, we if we get two more guys um, in, we can, you know, I think we can finish this thing up. We're yeah, at the yeah. telling. And what I just get what I would like to do uh, sometime in the very near future is actually have all of you guys come on. I think oh, uh, sure. to hear you know the chemistry between. Um, you guys that have been working together and, you know, going through the, it's gotta be a little bit stressful, you know, yeah, you're over well, there at home, you're directing, go here, no, go there, no, go, no, no, go there, you know, and what, what does this mean? And you're like, I don't know. Hey, I found this out. That's nothing. You know what I mean? Like the working together. Um, I would like to hear the camaraderie between yeah, you guys. And it, and it's funny. It's like, and, and, it, and the guys will tell you, I'm like, it's, it's so funny. They'll probably tell you I'm the biggest jerk on the planet. <laughs> Because I'm tough. Well, I'm actually I'm tough on them because I I don't like to just say, well, here's the answer. Yeah. It's like I want I still want these guys to if I if we if we're at a puzzle and I and I'm saying like I can say like okay here's how you can find the answer. Yeah. And and you, and if you can't take you know two seconds to Google a page and actually see the answer, you shouldn't ask me for it. Right. Right. And it's like you should, you know, you should have as much time invested, yeah, as 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 you know, as I am. It's like you, you know, it's like in certain things, if you don't see them with your own eyes, yeah, you don't believe that they're there, right? And so that's what I like is I like to push the guys to actually explore, see the answers, um, relate things, and because there's certain times like I may ask a guy, like you know, go and check for this particular um, building type. And if the guy doesn't want to go and see buildings, then he'll say no. And then we'll hit another puzzle where, you know, you're in a room and you, there's a symbol that matches a puzzle. Then the guy will say, well, what is, you know, what does this machine mean? And it's like, well, if you would have. <laughs> yeah, if you would have gone to the right, buildings. You know? <laughs> yeah. If you would have gone to the buildings and you would have gotten the answer. Right, right, and right. You wouldn't, and you wouldn't be asking me that right now. And, and that's how my mind works. Yeah. It's, you know, it's like. It's like after a certain point, I, I just my mind says move on, and so and it's like you kind of have to the way the way the puzzles are. Oh, can I say that really fast? <laughs> so the way the puzzles are actually written in No Man's Sky is how the universe is formed. So V one, if you think about it, V one is micro, meaning V one is kind of it's in your face, so you should be able to see it clearly. It should be easy to identify. Right. Then V2 moves back to macro. So V2 is like planetary in scale. Okay. And and then V3 is the hardest puzzle. So that's the puzzle where it basically is like galactic in scale. It's like big picture. Yeah. And and, and that's how these puzzles are framed. And it's kind of how the universe works. So if you understand like how um Yeah, it makes know, a lot of sense, yeah. You know, so if you if you see like you know from uh, from Big Bang how Big Bang happens and how a cell is formulated in your body and how that relates to you know, how an organism is actually put together and built in real life those the way those same three same uh, three things happen that's how it's actually built within uh, within No Man's Sky wow. and it's like and so that's been part of the challenge that I know that Sean has it's like you have these puzzles have to fit a certain form and you know those people can't solve it. Because it's, you know, technically not interactive. It's not a push button puzzle. Piece. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, make sure you send me any links that you want. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what it is. If you want people to contact you, or you know, a Facebook link, or if you got a YouTube channel, YouTube link, or gamer tag, or for Xbox, or anything you want, just make sure you send it to me in the Skype chat, and I'll see if I can get people directed towards you that want to contact you. Um. 
man, I wish you luck and I want you to come back on the show. And yeah. uh, it would be nice if we can get the other guys on too, or at least a couple of them or one of yeah. them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah that'd be great. Yeah, that would be, yeah, yeah, that would be, that would be great. But like I said, that was, that was the original purpose was I wanted to try to get, you know, guys with a bunch of different backgrounds yeah, you know, from different places around the world and just say, let's do this. And it, it takes that. It's truly amazing what you're doing. I mean, even though you're, you know, you, you speak Japanese, right? Yes. Yeah. So for you to go and look at Japanese streamers and you're reading what they're doing and you're comparing it to what people in America and other parts of the world are doing. It's just, man, that's just phenomenal, dude. It, yeah, just, everyone's playing this game different. Yeah, and it's just, it's, yeah. It's, just, it's weird. It's weird how the game is played. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's like it was funny. Yeah, when we got into you know October, November, some of the Japanese players had never left their initial planet. Wow, that's crazy. Because they're anal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're just like I'm gonna catalog the entire planet. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they didn't move and it's like so it's just really interesting to see how the game was played. yeah all right man it's been okay. really really super super fun and i enjoyed it uh like i said i, I want to have another one of these really soon um you know, keep us anticipated man uh I'll post wonder. whatever you need to post in in the cobra tv facebook group and all the other no Man's guy facebook uh groups that we have also the exploreNMS.com. might want to go in there and touch base with some of those guys yeah, um, yeah. Other than I, that, I, I, uh, keep trucking, dude. I'm, you know, I'm not going anywhere. Gonna... <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you know, like I said, I think you know we'll be, you know, we'll be there to to the, you know, to the finish line to the end of this thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you know, and I, I just wish that other people um, get that kind of value and get that kind of experience that they can that they can also do that. Right. And the only way you do that is if you, like I said, you have to dig into the lore. If yeah. you dig into the lore, there's there's stuff for you to discover. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Keep away from the center. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ron. Uh, it's been fun, right. man. You take care, man. Be safe out there. You too.